Hi, in this fifth in my series of videos about the different diagrams in the Unified and Systems Modeling Languages, I thought I'd cover Block Definition Diagrams in SysML. This is really a follow-on from my second video in the series, which was on UML class diagrams. This is because BDDs in SysML do for system engineers what class diagrams in UML do for software engineers. They both involve the classification of structural elements and the establishment of relationships between them. The key difference is that SysML uses a stereotype class called a block, and of course, blocks conceptually will often be non-coding things such as organizational structures, physical elements, or systems, subsystems, and components. Each block defines a collection of features to describe a system or other element of interest. As well as showing the block's features, Block Definition Diagrams, or BDDs for short, allow us to define and show the relationships between blocks, such as associations, compositions, aggregations, generalizations, and dependencies. Although class diagrams share these same relationships, it's very likely that you would end up emphasizing different types of relationship when you build a SysML model than you might with a class diagram in UML. For example, associations, which are central for defining communication paths between collaborating objects in an OO design, are not something you'd often use in a SysML BDD. Their predominance is replaced instead by one of composition relationships, because composition relationships enable the hierarchical decomposition of types. The composition relationship in UML could be read as a hazard relationship and is denoted by a filled in diamond. System engineering is really about building highly cohesive and loosely coupled components. As such, BDDs tend to look like trees of blocks and other classifiers. This diagram is telling me that the automotive domain is an assembly of a system that comprises, amongst other things, of a block representing a hybrid sports utility vehicle and a block representing the environment. Furthermore, the environment is decomposed into blocks representing weather, a road, and an external object. The hybrid SUV is further decomposed into parts, typed by blocks, that represent subsystems of a vehicle, such as a body subsystem and a brake subsystem. I could show these by dragging the blocks on from the browser, and Rapsi would auto-populate existing relationships on the diagram when I do this. As with class diagrams, it's the modeler's choice what the scope of the BDD is. In this instance, the BDD is nested under a package called the HSUV structure, and the frame tells us the scope. You could also nest the BDDs under a block if you want, and this would be represented in the diagram frame. Diagram frames are a mandated part of SysML and convey the scope and context of the diagram. This is a BDD of a block called the hybrid SUV, and the diagram is called the hybrid SUV breakdown. Notice in this diagram, there's an aggregation between the power subsystem and the block called the brake pedal. This represents a SysML concept called a reference part. This is because the brake pedal is not owned by the power subsystem. However, it is referenced and it's connected in the internal block diagram to other parts. If I go to the IBD, then you can see this reference part and notice that it's represented by a dashed line because it's not owned by the power subsystem block. Note how this IBD is where the wiring between ports and parts is made, not on the BDD. This can sometimes be a challenge for new users. The key thing is that blocks are types of things. If I had a car with four wheels, then my block definition diagram would define a block representing a car and a block representing a wheel. If I have four wheels, then I have four parts typed by the same wheel block. Let's go back to the BDD. I just want to cover a few things about Rhapsody's implementation of SysML. Block definition diagrams in Rhapsody, like class diagrams, are defined by a new term stereotype applied to Rhapsody's base object model diagram type. But here's a the thing. There's a lot more diagram tools in the BDD toolbar than there are with a class diagram. Immediately it becomes apparent that the BDD offers more choice than with class diagrams because SysML has lots of different element types. Some of these are legacy elements and some we might not use. This is perhaps against the original intent of SysML, which if you recall from its Venn diagram overlapping with UML, had a smaller SysML circle to represent that SysML was smaller than UML and perhaps easier to learn. It's worth noting that Rhapsody has kept pace with SysML, including adding new concepts such as proxy for ports and interface blocks. 
Rather than manage multiple versions of its SysML profile, however, there is a single SysML profile with a superset of all the concepts. This has the benefit of supporting existing models without changing them, while allowing modelers to utilize the new concepts such as proxy ports if they want to in either new or existing models. It does mean that there's lots of things in the BDD toolbar though. To get around this issue, the Rhapsody development team added a customizable feature called the Perspectives toolbar. The Perspectives toolbar enables you to have a pull down list that filters the Rhapsody menus, including the drawing toolbar. You can essentially change the palette to only a subset of the types in the profile. Reducing the menus makes it simpler for users who are not SysML experts, but does of course mean that someone needs to make a choice up front about what tools you want. For example, if I know that my modeling approach is not going to use associations and flow specifications on a BDD, then it's probably better to remove them from the toolbar before anyone sees the tool. Otherwise, you have to tell people not to use it. Here I've added a perspective toolbar that hides some of the legacy tools from the users. Personally, I've seen a lot of companies benefit from simplifying the Rapsi menus up front to reduce the training needs and improve modeling consistency. This is a greater challenge when rolling out Rapsi to a wider audience with less knowledge and experience of SysML. And it's partly a challenge caused by a generic language which has many concepts. A second thing worth noting in Rapsi's BDD implementation is more fundamental to SysML, which is that when you draw a composition relationship, then Rhapsody will create a par automatically in the browser based on the composition's role name. This is enabled by a property called represent parts. The same behavior can be added to Rhapsody class diagrams, but does require a little property magic up front if this is the behavior you want. Importantly for understanding BDDs, I just want to emphasize that you can't draw connectors between ports on a BDD. The diagram you should use for this is called an internal block diagram in SysML, or a composite structure diagram in UML. Essentially, it's on the IBD, where we do the wiring in the SysML, and connectors go between parts rather than blocks. Finally, SysML puts a lot of emphasis on the use of compartments to show the features of a block. And Rhapsody is very powerful in allowing you to choose which compartments you want to show, the order of the compartments, and also what things to show in the compartments. To do this, you'll need to set the graph node representing the element to specification view and go to the display options dialog. Rhapsody's display options dialog isn't bad at allowing multi-selection either. I'll add a compartment that shows the parts on all these blocks. Anyway, I hope that helps to give at least an overview of Rhapsody's implementation of the block definition diagram in SysML. My name is Fraser Chaburn, and I specialize in tool-based training and consulting in IBM products and in particular setting up Rhapsody using domain-specific profiles. My other area of expertise is easing modeling by using Java automation and profiles to speed up and simplify modeling tasks so that users can focus on creative and fun systems and software engineering. If you do have any questions, then feel free to contact me. Here's my email address.